Hi, this is Professor Cummings. And I wanted to do another video here, and this one is going to be on materials, uh, particularly iron and steel production. I thought this was an important video simply because iron is such a, an important engineering material. It shows up in a lot of material engineering structures. It's the basis of a lot of our machining diagrams. The B1112 standard uh, is based around iron. And it's you know one of the biggest focuses in casting. So I wanted to go through a little bit about how iron is actually refined, and then further how it is processed to make various grades of iron and steel. Now, before I keep going on this video, I want you to go ahead and give me some sort of feedback on this. Either you know like the video, uh, give me some input on other uh, topics that you think would be important in terms of the manufacturing and, and engineering as well as uh, subscribe to the video. This also is going to reference a few other of my videos on metal casting and uh, other topics that, that may be helpful. So let's go ahead and get going with this discussion on, on materials. So what you have here in front of you, or what you see in this, this picture, is not just simply three rocks, but it's actually uh, iron ore, uh, silver ore, and gold ore. You know, if you were to go digging around in the ground and actually you know, find some of uh, this particular gold or silver or iron, you would actually find something that may actually look a lot like uh, rocks, maybe a little more pretty rocks, but, but rocks nonetheless. Now, what you can see is if you actually take these rocks and you know how to refine them and what type of processes you would actually require to actually uh, take the impurities out of them, you can actually make some pretty uh, interesting and pretty uh, productive, pretty useful items from them you know from you know iron silver and and gold so how does this happen what what is actually the process here so what i'm going to use is an analogy so i'm going to compare the iron ore you see at the bottom with the filthy water that you're seeing in in the above picture what do they both have in common they both have impurities you know in iron ore those impurities are primarily oxygen uh, carbon and a few other items, you know, that that may be in, you know, iron in its uh, raw state. And with water, you know, if you were to go to a pond or a lake and pull up its, pull it out of the, uh, out of its main reservoir, you'd see that there's a lot of dirt and other organisms inside of the the water. You know, so it, in both in their original state, they both are not too useful to the everyday person. So there's a lot of impurities, but they both can be brought into a state where they are very useful. And the, the analogy here is that the process of getting water to a useful state for drinking and other processes is similar, analogous to the idea of getting iron to a useful state. You know, first is the idea of actually removing the impurities of water, either through some sort of filtration or distil distillation process. And also is the whole idea of infusing uh, water, you know, in order to get other items such as, you know, infusing water with tea or coffee. So how does this work? What's that, that analogy? So, you know, like I said, you could remove the impurities from water through some sort of distillation process and through the same sort of or a similar type of process of, of refining, you can remove oxygen and end up with a useful type of iron. Now that's just a generic iron uh, block that I or ingot that I pulled up off off the line. So so we'll go into more how that works. And same goes with in, uh, the infusion process. Just like with tea, you can actually infuse some sort of leaf into the water and end up with a tea infusion. You can actually infuse that iron once it's been processed and all the you know it's no longer iron ore with different types of elements and actually produce, you know, something useful such as stainless steel, you know, and that's really what happens with iron to stainless steel. You actually got sulfur, magnesium, chromium, you know, silicon, phosphorus, and nickel can make something like 304 stainless steel in, you know, if you have the percentages correct, which is a much easier material to to actually process, actually easy to, to machine or forge. It can actually um, be resistance to corrosion. You know, it has all sorts of other benefits to it over just, uh, you know, unprocessed iron. 
So how does this process work? So obviously you can't put iron in a still, you know, so, so the process of, of removing the impurities from iron is, is a little more complicated. That's where the, the analogy pretty much comes to an end. And what we can do is look at, you know, the methods in which that sort of process takes place. Now, what do we have here? is what's known as a bloomery. A bloomery is one of the oldest types of furnaces that were used to process iron. Now, the way a bloomery works is you have your iron ore and some sort of charcoal, uh, charcoal. you know, it could either be coal or sometimes wood charcoal. Uh, and you've got a, a bloomery actually built out of a tower, which is usually clay or stone. So this is the, the tower the bloomery is made from. So it's either clay or, or stone, some sort of refractory material. So clay or some sort of stone. So clay or stone as a refractory material. There's an inlet or a type of bellows so that you can get oxygen into the system. You actually have a basin down at the bottom, you know, for your, your iron to collect and for your slag to collect, and I'll go more into what the slag actually is. You know, and then when this is ignited, when this is heated up, the charcoal actually removes the impurities from the iron. So it goes about removing the, the oxygen as well as carbon and a few other uh, uh, impurities that are actually within the iron. Now, the funny thing about this is in a bloomery, the iron does not melt. The, this entire process takes place below the melting point of iron. Now, this produces the actual end product is known as a bloom. So the actual end product in a bloomery is actually known as a bloom. And the goal, this is pre-14th you know, century, the goal was to get a low carbon iron that can be easily forged. So what was done was this bloom was taken and it actually was beaten and forged until you'd actually produce things like swords and farming implements uh, and other items from, from this iron. So it was a very low, or it has the ability to make a low carbon iron. Anywhere from below uh, the 0.2% and up to somewhere around, you know, into the pig iron, which is about 5% iron. So it has the ability to produce a, a range of, of iron products. And it all took place below the melting point, uh, removing uh, the carbon, producing this low carbon steel. And part of this process actually produced a byproduct known as slag. So slag was just a a byproduct. It was the impurities that were that had an affinity for some of the the burning process, the 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 refining process, particularly the carbon monoxide that actually came out of the the blooming process, the bloomery process. Now, like I said, this took place below the melting point of iron, and it produced a wide range of iron so that it could be forged later. Now, as the process became more advanced we developed uh, some different methods of processing this iron. One was actually using not just, you know, iron ore, breaking the iron ore up into smaller pellets, you know, and then also using something called limestone and coal. Now, the purpose of limestone and the further refinement of this coal was the coal was actually refined further. And what this coal was refined to was something called coke. Coke can drive the temperature up. So it was used to raise the temperature of the entire process. So now it went from being below the, the melting point of iron to well above the melting point of iron, somewhere around 1800 degrees Celsius is how hot these uh, temperatures could get. Now the whole purpose of limestone was to remove impurities. It was to remove the impurities Whereas in a, a bloomery, there was actually no limestone. So there was no limestone there, and it was, uh, which is also known as a flux. And all flux is, is just a term used in uh, metal processing, in casting, and in welding for a substance that has an affinity for the impurities within the, the uh, base metal. So this limestone was used as a flux. It generated a slag, and the slag was a, just a waste product that came off of the refinement process. 
and use this uh, this flux bring the material of the iron up high enough that it was molten the impurities were drawn out with the limestone formed a slag and what you wound up with was a more refined material and it, we had this process now known as a blast furnace now a blast furnace you can see has a very similar layout as a bloomery you know it's actually still a tall process going from high to low so you've actually got your coke your iron ore and your limestone going in through the top you've got hot air being blasted in at the bottom similar to a bloomery it could get up to 1800 degrees Celsius now what the difference is, is due to these high temperatures due to these high temperatures the metal was actually brought to a um, molten state where you had molten slag so a waste product that came out and you also have molten iron now one of the ideas of going with a, a high blast of air is that the carbon monoxide through this coal or, or coke process has a stronger affinity for oxygen than the iron itself so this was what caused the refinement in a blast furnace this was one of the things that helped with the refinement of getting the oxygen out of the iron ore again the iron is molten brought into a molten state and what you're left with is an iron product known as pig iron now pig iron is not like the the byproduct that or the end product that you got when you had a bloomery pig iron has a much higher carbon content so it has higher carbon higher carbon and it is much more brittle and not as strong as as what was coming out of the bloomery and it was actually considered you know if you had your this was one of the things they managed around if you wound up with pig iron in the process of a bloomery it was actually considered a waste you actually you know your process was was producing a, a essentially garbage something that you couldn't use what people found was by producing pig iron with this higher carbon content they could now start to refine the process or refine the metal more and get more exact types of uh, product from it because they could actually control the carbon content so it produces pig iron so that's going to be good for further processing now the carbon in pig iron is what made it so brittle you know and then then this so this is one of the things to keep in mind very carefully because this is going to be very important throughout the entire process of of refining of iron so the more carbon that's in the in, in the iron actually it increases the the brittleness the less carbon the more ductile it becomes so you end up with these different types of steel or varied iterations of steel uh, product now if we were to look at it you know the amount of of carbon within iron you know by weight can range anywhere from almost zero percent up to six point six seven percent that's not showing on the scale but six point six seven percent and that becomes a different type of alloy that actually is considered a ceramic so but if we look at this scale you can see that from about 2.1 percent two percent up to that 6.67 percent it's considered just a, a, a different family of iron or different families of iron below that range it's considered a steel product now steel can be broken down even more into a low grade or a low carbon steel medium high and very high carbon steel and that's anywhere between the ranges of 0 0.05 percent uh, carbon all the way up to 2.1 percent carbon anything above that is considered is no longer considered steel but it, and it's no longer it has the ductility of steel or other benefits of, of steel properties now if you want to take steel and you want to gain all the other benefits in terms of say stainless steel you have to add other alloying materials such as chromium nickel silicon manganese and you know that's how you end up with the various uh, grades of, of stainless steel that can have you know corrosion resistance and, and change the weight and change how easily it can be machined now when we stay inside of this family of iron the percent of carbon breaks down a little differently you know 
between 2% and 4%, you, what you have is known as different grades of cast iron. This is where you'll see cast iron, gray cast iron, you know, and the like that all fall within this 2% to 4%. You know, in an overlap up to about 4.5%, 4.5% is what's known as this pig iron. And pig iron, again, this is uh, very brittle, can be refined down to uh, the different grades of it, uh, different grades of iron, different grades of, of iron and steel. So this is the, the goal of a blast furnace. Down here was the goal of, you know, from this point below was the goal of a bloomery. And then all the way up here at the end at 6.67%, you've got something called cementite. Cementite is, again, very high carbon to iron content, and it's actually considered a ceramic. So again, this is Professor Cummings. Go ahead and uh, like our, and subscribe to my channel. I have videos that come out at least twice a week. I'm also present on Google+, and you can see me on Facebook and Twitter. And again, if you have any comments or any topics that you'd like to see covered, please leave below. I read all my comments. I try to interact with people as much as I can. Uh, this channel is, is really for the benefit of people in uh, uh, manufacturing and engineering. Uh, so any of your feedback is, is really crucial, and I do take it. Other than that, uh, thanks a lot uh, for watching the video, and I'll talk to you next time.